Welcome to Guide to Giants, Part 3, Alternative Openings. Ooh, I need some water. In about 90%, 95% of games where we're playing Giants, we'll be sticking to the standard Giants Openings playbook. But sometimes you need some spice in your life, right? And um, and also every once in a while, giants are in a setup where you might actually be better off deviating from the standard opening plan. It should be rare, but every once in a while, it might be the case and you want to be ready for it. So let's dive into alternative openings for giants. What we see here are fancy pants. So just like in real life, um, you know, fancy pants are usually a mistake, but every once in a while you put them on and you're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. And you just like crush it that day. And it's rarely the case that that was a good decision, but every once in a while, it really does work out well. I think that's how we should think about these alternative weird giants openings. It's, do we want to put on our fancy pants today? Is this that one in 20 games where it actually might work out here or is this actually a huge huge mistake hmm well let's take a look at some of these openings all right we've got our giants fancy pants on it's time to think about semi dwelling rush opening so semi dwelling rush means so a dwelling rush is when you build only a bunch of dwellings around one semi dwelling rush refers to that you're doing one trading post and usually four new dwellings and so this is actually, um, in certain circumstances, this is an opening Giants can uh, accomplish. So let's take a look at when, why, and how. So um, what does a semi-dwelling rush uh, look like? So first of all, let's think about a track where that's a tr uh, you know appealing. If we see big buildings scoring in round two, but dwellings in round one, that might be an idea to delay our stronghold to round two and try to score with building out dwellings in round one if we can. So let's again look at our bottleneck of workers. We have six workers. How do we allocate those for a semi-dwelling rush? Well, two of those workers are gonna go to a trading post and then we have four left that we can use for building new dwellings. And that's how we're gonna spend our workers in this round. And to do this, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need temporary shipping, which gives us the three power. And it has to be a setup where with temp ship, if we take it, we are gonna have access to double dig. Um, based on other factions not getting power scrolls, um, perhaps there aren't any factions that have nine power in bowl two at, to start the game. And just looking at the way um, upgrading is gonna happen. If we take this temporary shipping, we'll already have 10 power in bowl two, will be the faction that's gonna have access to double dig. All of a sudden this starts sounding like semi-dwelling rush could be appealing. Okay, so our game plan is as follows. We're on temp ship. We're here, here's an example with double center. We upgrade it to a trading post and we get whatever little power we need. And now, and I know I told you not to do this, but this is a weird alternative opening. So it's a different ball game. We are going to double dig. We're gonna take the double dig power action and let's say we, we double dig that hex and um, build on it. So now we've got trading post, one new dwelling, and now with our temp shipping, we have three more places where we can get um, dwellings down. So we just are opening, we're spending our six workers, one trading post, four new dwellings, and that looks pretty good. And we scored four um, dwellings in the dwelling round. And also note, we have a TP ready. What's round two? Stronghold Sanctuary scoring. So we're all set up to score with the Stronghold in round two. So now we have our Stronghold in round two, and how does the game flow out from here? All of a sudden it doesn't look so weird. What seemed like a very weird opening all of a sudden looks a bit natural. So um, what can we do now? Well, now, you know, we uh, can stomp B4 to get to A9. We could, um, you know, build a six where, you know, we've increased our ship. Um, likewise, we're already south and southwest. We, you know, with shipping, we can get all over the map. And so if you look at this, by doing a semi-dwelling rush, we've scored really well on the track and we've also got crazy board control, right? We were able to um, you know, basically get almost every natural red on this entire board. And sadly, I-12 in the bottom right corner is tough to get to. We're probably not gonna get that one. 
Here's another example, even weirder. And again, I'm, I'm not advocating for this or encouraging you to do it, but um, you know, I think by giving another example, you sort of can see the logic of, of how it might apply, right? So we've gone trading post, we're in slightly weirder starting placements here, but imagine we could be on G2 and either, either way, we're gonna double dig that um, hex that's in the red box. So we could come from G2, double dig it and build E3 or the other direction. Coming from E3, double dig it, build G2, and we're also building I5, D6. We've got our trading post, four new dwellings, and we're ready to stronghold in, in round two. Now, if we do this, we're sacrificing D4. We're not going to get D4 in this type of game plan. Um, but the, the rest of the game probably looks like this. We're going to go stronghold. At some point, we'll need to take E8. G or G3 to connect one of those. And if you think about the rest of the game, we're actually gonna be able to play pretty efficiently, right? We're gonna get a lot of those native hexes. So we've sacrificed a little, um, you know, and we're gonna have an okay game here. This isn't something that's super strong, but if you're in a really weird setup and you don't, you know, it's sort of back against the wall, maybe this is a, a creative way to sort of get out of jail. Here's a third and final weird example. We can imagine doing that same sort of double dig in the Northeast. And we see, you know, likewise, we're gonna do our four new dwellings then. We build A12, D6, and we can build uh, I5. And so now we have our four new dwellings and a trading post. We're ready to stronghold in round two. Again, we're gonna sacrifice D4, but otherwise the rest of the game plan again looks pretty reasonable. So again, I'm, I'm not saying this is the dream, this is some ideal circumstance, but as a fallback, depending on the track, this is the kind of outside of the box thinking that every once in a while could be fun to entertain. Which brings us to Temple Giants. Temple Giants are the idea of opening temple instead of stronghold. Right. So where does the logic of Temple Giants come from? And this was sort of first um, sort of proposed by NerdCube and a little bit like like food for thought or an idea to think about giants a little bit differently. But I haven't seen anyone really like dig into the, the deeper logic of it or even the 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 how exactly do you afford it? What does that game plan look like? Or at least I'm trying to build a little bit on um, what NerdCube has talked about. To, uh, how he has talked about it so far. So let's just talk it through here, right? So we have the giant scoring problem. Well, if we temple round one, that's a way for us to get earth one. And that might be the solution to our, to our scoring problem, right? Now the rest of the game, when we build anything, we're gonna score two points for it. So temple giants are a way to address the giant scoring problem. Another reason we might do it is the track. If we see big building scoring round two instead of round one and temple round one, all of a sudden doing a traditional giants opening where we're going stronghold round one, temple round two, for example, just doesn't seem to make a ton of sense to us. Now, of course we can do it. And there are probably situations where even with this track, uh, round one, round two, it's probably, it, it's better. But when we see something like this, we could wonder, hmm, might this be an opportunity to do something like temple giants here? What would that look like? Okay, so let's talk it through. So I think the simplest way to put it is that we are going to try to get to the same place backwards, okay? So we're gonna try to end round two looking pretty much the same as a standard Giants plan, but we're gonna do the whole thing backwards. So we're a standard opening, right? We, we stronghold, we um, are gonna build two new dwellings and then round two, maybe we, we try to temple then. Temple Giants try to get to the same place but doing it very differently. They're gonna open temple, then round two, they're gonna go stronghold and try to get two new dwellings down, right? And so if you think about it that way, it's you're not producing quite as much income coming out of round one if you do the temple giants route, but ultimately you kind of get to the same type of, of, um, type of place. So super practically speaking, what does this look like? Let's look at the simplest version to illustrate. Okay, so in round one, we're gonna build trading post temple, right? So we know we st our bottleneck is workers typically. We're going to allocate four workers to that. So um, in round two, we said we wanna go, um, we're going to trading post stronghold. And then we're gonna stomp and try to get two new dwellings down. That If we can do that, then we're getting to a reasonable end of round two spot. Not so dissimilar to what we would be doing if we, if we played a more standard opening. Okay, so what we need in round two is eight workers and 13 coins. 
how do we afford that? Okay, well, in round one, we've taken Earth one with our temple, let's say. So we have left over two workers and seven, seven coins. If all we've done is, is trading post in Earth one. So, and we'll have two worker income. We'll have one dwelling left on the board and our base income of one. So we have four workers, seven coins going into round two. So our, what we need to find is four workers and six coins by round two. That's what we need to find to be able to play Temple Giants successfully, to make sure that we don't completely fall on our faces. We have to make sure that we're able to build the stronghold and get new dwellings down in round two. So where do those come from? This is where we bring in how are we using our power and what are our scrolls that we're starting on. All we really need is four workers and six coins. So um, we could imagine in round one being on one of the coin scrolls and then taking either the worker power action or the coin power action. And uh, in round two, we have optionality here too. It would be great if we could land on the big building scroll for round two. We're going to build the stronghold that round. Um, and we could also imagine um, taking, instead of the worker power action round one, we could imagine taking it round two, and we could also imagine landing on another sort of coin scroll or something like that to help us afford the coins, right? And probably the, the most valuable thing here is if we can sort of stock the, um, uh, the big building scroll, this is the one where we'd really love to land on that for round two to be two of the four workers we're missing. We score with it and we can use our power then um, for coins actions instead of, and, and only one uh, worker power action. So let's look at a, at a very plausible, specific example of how this could look. So imagine round one, we start on the six coin scroll, which tends to not be one that people want to start on. Um, and also let's plan to take the coins power action round one, also not a hotly contested um, power action in round one. This is really feasible. And then let's say round two, we're able to land on the big building scroll and we take the worker power action. Round two, the worker power action is not that sought after. Sought after. It's very um, you know, competed for in round one. It's pretty easy to get access to the worker power action round two. So this is all very realistic. Well, if we do that in round two, counting our income, we're at eight workers and 20 coins. That, and we said that what we wanna pay for in round two costs eight workers and 13 coins. So we've um, pretty uh, efficiently gotten to, to be able to pay for the things that we need, want to build in round two, um, even though we didn't actually do that much in round one. Now, one additional wrinkle here is we do want to get two dwellings in round two. And um, on, a, on base map, for example, we said if you want to do that, um, you might need to bridge, right? So it's possible that this actually requires also a bridge in round two. But on the plus side is we did get our priest production going. So in this game plan, we also have a priest that we can put to a cult, which is sort of unusual for giants, right? To um, have a decent jump, and maybe we have a little bit of cult presence because we started with a temple this game. The other very reasonable approach here is instead of doing um, bridge with a priest to cult, we have that priest we have a lot of coins because of our approach to the game so far. We can actually just straight pay for shipping and then we get our other one stomp for two hexes that way. Totally affordable. Um, it costs a little bit more in, in terms of coins, but even here we have three coins left over heading into the following round. So we've been thinking about how do we get to the same place backwards with Temple Giants? Now, um, so why might we do this? Well, uh, one of the reasons is we might be scoring more by taking the Temple Giants route. So even just on a track like this, we would be scoring nine points more uh, on this track with a Temple Giants open approach round one and round two as opposed to a standard opening. Furthermore, when we built those two dwellings, we already had Earth One in hand, right? We have Earth One when we're building out our dwellings. We got an extra four points already from that. Um, additionally, there might be games where, um, you know, Giants have the huge scoring problem. That was our principle number three. We have to have a solution to it. Well, we actually have Earth One in Temple Giants. There might be situations where other factions have taken Earth one by the time we're ready to temple in round two. So in some sense, maybe if there are really aren't good ways to score in this game for giants, the fact that we are get Earth one at all, as opposed to templing round two and not having access to it, and maybe it's too early to be taking water one, etc., 
just actually having Earth One at all might make Temple Giants worth it in certain circumstances. Now, we do need to acknowledge we've produced less in the Temple Giants wrap because we built out less round one. We haven't been generating quite as much. Um, and that's the trade off for scoring, right? We're willing to do that because we're helping solve our giant scoring problem. But we should acknowledge if you're going like a Temple Giants route, it's exceedingly unlikely that you're going to win network, for example. So this it might make more sense if you're already playing against big network factions that are going to beat you on network anyway. You have to find that source of points. This is one way of thinking about that. All right, going down the rabbit hole a little bit here, um, let's consider Temple Giants starting on the temporary shipping scroll instead, right? So what would that look like? The idea here is that you um, you open Temple and are still able to get a dwelling or two down because of your temp shipping and your starting placements, and that helps your worker income and helps you sort of open a little bit more efficiently and then uh, afford the, the stronghold round two. So if you're on D7G2, temp ship helps you reach D6I5, and you can open TP Temple, two new dwellings, and now you're passing into round two. So um, now if you want to do this with more standard starting placements, um, then you're only building D6, so you're opening Temple, one new dwelling. So let's look through what that would look like in terms of how we're going to pay for these things. This is sort of temp ship, Temple Giants. So, uh, so what do we need here? Okay, so we have one worker left over if we're opening, you know, TP Temple, one new dwelling. We've got one worker and five coins left over. We're gonna have three worker income here. So we have four workers and five coins heading into round two. And we said um, we wanna go trading post stronghold stomp build. That's seven workers and 11 coins. How do we get there, right? Here we're missing three workers and six coins. And we said we we're gonna try to make these up with our power actions and pass scrolls. And so to, we need to figure out how to, in, in some combination between our power actions and our round two scroll to get three workers and six coins. Now, see here that like three workers is a little bit awkward, right? It, you know, they, they're sort of, they sort of come in pairs often, particularly in power actions. We could land on, a, on the three power one worker scroll. So maybe we're taking a worker power action round two and landing on the three power one worker. We're taking a worker power action and landing on big building and taking a coins action round one. Totally reasonable, a little bit awkward, but it is possible. But you can see that it's going to be just so much smoother if we're able to do temp ship temple giants in a way that's just more efficient. So let's take a look at the affordability of doing it where we do start in weird places, but it lets us get two new dwellings down round one instead of only one. So apologies for belaboring some of these cost calculations, but so now we're in the world where we're getting that second dwelling down round one with our temple. So we have we spent all six of our workers, so we have um, zero workers left over and three coins, but we're going to have four worker income now. And so that means we have four workers and three coins heading into round two. And in round two, we said we want to TP stronghold and stomp. And that gets us to the place where we have temple, stronghold, and two new dwellings. And actually in this world, we even have an extra empty red that we've stomped. Now to get that, we need two workers and six coins. That's all we need. Um, between round one and round two. So that's really easily achievable. Either we're hitting a coins action in round one or round two and landing on the big building scroll. Um, and you can just see how uh, uh, how much more efficient this feels um, doing the temp ship temple giants, getting two dwellings down instead of one. It's just a lot more in stride. We can take more efficient power actions. Maybe we can even get coins action round one and round two and, and be pretty flush that way. Another example would be, um, you know, taking a worker power action, for example, round two and using a coin scroll in round two and or coin power action round one. Again, surprisingly affordable and all the actions here are pretty darn efficient. So um, now should we be doing any of this with temp ship temple giants? Probably not, but that one in 200 giants games, maybe uh, temp ship uh, temple giants is viable. That said, if you want to pursue it, I would recommend entertaining um, starting in weird starting placements and taking and then benefit from that by getting two new dwellings down round one instead of just one, um, as opposed to the temp ship temple giants where you only get one new dwelling down. It's, it's a little too inefficient and you're not going to get your airplane off the ground um, 
uh, with enough gusto to really make the most of that anyway. So again, Temple Giants, definitely a bit of fancy pants spice factor. There is a time and a place where you can make the argument that it is better. Um, but in general, those situations are rare and it's not easy to pull off. So again, I don't want, you know, let's first and foremost, remember our Giants principles. But again, at least now, hopefully we have a little bit of a theoretical understanding of like, what, what does a Temple Giants game look like? And what are the signs that it might be playable? Now we did Temple Giants because we thought to ourselves, gosh, I want a temple and so I'm willing to not do a stronghold so that I can afford the temple. And so let's ask ourselves, why not both? Why not open stronghold and temple round one? Heck, what could go wrong? Let's give it a try. So a stronghold temple opening for giants, it, it means we're going trading post stronghold and then trading post temple on our other starting spot. And so again, we start with six workers, 15 coins. So how do we get there? Okay, well, basically we need four workers and two coins to be able to afford that relative to, you know, based only on our starting resources. That's what we're short to be able to afford opening uh, Stronghold and Temple. Four workers, two coins. Okay, so we're on the big building scroll and we take the worker power action. And if we do that, all we need is two coins now. Maybe we're able to get the coins action also, or perhaps we just, you know, straight convert two power to two coins. Pretty easy to do. Um, so this is now the affordability of opening Stronghold Temple. And the beauty of Stronghold Temple opening here is we got our economic Stronghold up and we're getting to take a favor round one. And let's go, we solved our giant scoring problem. So now we're economic and we're scoring and we're so happy about that. We're doing our dance and we get to round two and we're like, wait, what? Why do I only have one worker? Uh, that's not good. And of course, then we see, oh, right. In round one, we allocated 10 workers to get you know, a stronghold and temple up. We didn't have a spare worker to build on that first stomp in round one. So we actually stomped and, and left a vacant red or Perhaps we stomp down our landscape, which doesn't produce anything, although I recommend stomping and leaving the vacant red in most cases. And so we're getting to round two and we have one worker in hand. This is really problematic. There's no point in getting earth one if you're not producing good economy, right? That's just, you know, that's like putting, um, you know, uh, racing tires on, you know, your lawn mower that you have to push. Like it just doesn't really do anything. So, uh, so what we now need to figure out is, okay, wait, we can't let our worker income for round in round two be one worker if we're doing this. So one uh, way of handling this is um, anticipating, seeing how the, the actions are gonna break down. And if we can see that the worker power scroll will be available, and this is not a scroll that's very sought after for round two, this can be a way to say, okay, we can open Stronghold Temple, take Earth One, and we can still have our two workers to start round two. We'll easily get two dwellings down in that case because we left a vacant red and we have a round two stomp. We're scoring with both of those um, with Earth One. All of a sudden, this starts to look reasonable again. I think we can keep our airplane in the air in this uh, circumstance. Another possibility here with the Stronghold Temple round one where we're taking Earth One is let's say we used um, got our two coins that we need via direct conversions, one power to two coins. Um, so we have a bit more power left over and let's look, let's say it's round one stronghold and we get workers from fire. So one possibility we could do here because we have this issue with um, having insufficient worker production in round two. Um, and so what if we take priest power action and we get it to that fire cult? All of a sudden we're getting two workers off the fire cult heading into round two, that really alleviates our um, worker concerns. So now actually we have three workers at the start of round two. Um, and the big thing now is we have to make sure we're getting coins. So we're really hunting. We're either aiming for a coins power action or trying to get on a coin scroll. If we can do that, this looks pretty darn nice. So this could work, right? This is a way for us to circumvent. Um, if we wanna open Stronghold Temple, with Earth One, the question we need to figure out is, okay, how are we getting those workers for round two to make sure we don't crash and burn? Getting stuck with only one worker income is not good enough. 
So it's interesting how when we want to open stronghold temple as giants, the issue becomes workers at the start of round two. We're used to having, you know, priest and coin problems. Here we're getting our priest production going, but we are we risk sort of um, getting our airplane stuck on the ground and not being able to really um, get takeoff in round two. So we want to make sure we have at least two workers at the start of round two. Well, what's one way to do that? We could open Earth 2, right? We could be doing Earth 2 giants here, and now we're guaranteed two worker income in round two. This is definitely going to play out uh, in a way where we're getting good production. So um, now all of a sudden, uh, we have good worker income. We're opening Stronghold Temple. We're definitely going to get dwellings down round two. Um, Maybe we're worried uh, about um, the other needs, right? So we, we also need money to help balance this production. So we really want to make sure we're taking the seven coin power action. We're looking for things like the six um, coin scroll. Maybe we try to land on that for round two. Um, maybe also it's, you know, dig points. And that goes along with coins off the cult for Earth. So Earth 2 gives us those coins back. So we're now all of a sudden being flush in coins elsewhere helps make Earth 2 make more sense. We're going to be producing tons of workers this game in the long run. And if we can, uh, we can make the most of that if we're also getting tons of money from other sources. Um, now, scoring, <laughs> we have a giant scoring problem. We didn't solve that. Usually when we think about going early temple, it's to make sure giants have a, a, like a, a really good scoring tool so they can convert economy into points. Here we went Earth 2. And as long as we're getting a lot of, of uh, money elsewhere, this is going to be a pretty explosive game as long as we have good avenues to um, for scoring. So we really only want to do this if we then see really nice ways on track, um, up, places where we can take scoring favors and on the pass scrolls where this is all going to turn into really nice scoring. Now, one of our big issues um, as giants is money. And it feels weird to say, you know, we want to hunt coins and priests. Let's go Earth 2. That sort of feels backwards to us. So maybe that can discourage us from Earth 2. So we're back to worrying about our, our coin problem for giants. That gives us an idea, right? How about we open Fire 1? Um, fire 1's great. We want to hunt priests and coins. We can temple round 1, taking Fire 1. That gives us almost a ship increase per round, right? It, that temple's producing a priest and three coins. That sounds really, really, uh, that fits our, our you know desires really well. However, we're back to the point of um, worrying about our worker income round two. We don't want to get stuck with only one worker in round two. That's too paralyzing. We'll, we won't be able to, um, you know, sort of uh, build up and escalate our production sufficiently if we do that. So our worker problem is still pressing and we have to make sure we have those two workers for round two. However, let's take a look at um, let's, let, let's take a look. Giants start with a step on fire and air. So if round one is um, fire worker reward for example taking that fire one favor tile actually gets us to the second step so we would get a free worker off the cult there so in this type of situation fire one um gives us that coin production and we start round two with two workers um and we'll see what other scroll we land on hopefully an efficient one we can actually have a pretty explosive game at this point now the big issue again we still have our scoring problem so we only want to do this if if the rest of the setup looks nice for for scoring um the rest of the way and then we make really good use for that priest income and the coin income that we're getting this way a related one would be going air two round one. And, you know, again, we uh, would get that extra worker off the cult. Um, and so we have our two workers at the start of round two. Part of the issue here is um, we still have our big scoring problem that we've been talking about. And if you recall, power income wasn't one of our unmet needs, right? We actually generate a lot of power already. So taking air two is pretty risky, it, you know, we have to really hope that we're gonna turn that into lots of, you know, coin power actions and priest power actions. So it, this tends to be ill-advised. We're probably um, better going other routes than trying to force ourselves with a clever stronghold temple air two opening for giants. Is it possible? Yes, but this would be the least attractive of the bunch that, um, in my opinion. And finally, let's consider the TP prep opening. So in the TP prep opening, what we're doing is we're having a pretty standard um, round one, except we're also going to build a trading post. And part of that is because um, oftentimes 
factions will have an economic opening and there can be a little bit of a race to earth one round two and giants have the giant scoring problem so what the tp prep opening does is it has a pretty efficient opening but it makes it so that you can very quickly temple round two and so that can be a way to get your economy off the ground and kind of get a, a bit of a jump start towards that um, earth one option round two and what we'll what we'll look at is in some ways it's not super efficient to be spending resources to um, leave trading posts on our board in round one, but we still end up um, having a really nice round two, including a stomp, another dwelling, and this is a route to um, towning really easily in round two. So let's unpack this. So our round one plan here is trading post stronghold, two new dwellings, and then build a trading post. So our bottleneck for now, let's see, is six workers. We need four more workers to be able to afford this. So we need four workers and we need one coin. Um, the four workers are gonna come from starting on the big building scroll and taking the worker power action. Now all of a sudden we can afford this. We still need one more coin and we're likely gonna need a bridge to get both dwellings down in round one. I'll show you an example of this in a moment. Now what's nice about this is if we have this opening, our income is, is, is pretty balanced. We're gonna have three new workers two coins from the trading post and five power income, one from the trading post and four from the stronghold. Now in round two, what we wanna do is temple for earth one, stronghold uh, action, so giant stomp down a dwelling, and we'll be towning in round two ideally. And so, um, for a ship town. And all of a sudden our expansion possibilities are looking really, really good. And so what you see is those that three worker income that we have pays perfectly for temple and one new dwelling. And so all we really need to afford this in round two then is five coins. And so that's really easy for us to achieve. Either we got um, coin power action round one or we're getting it in round two or we're landing on a coin scroll for round two. So let's play this out from our standard um, starting placements uh, uh, as giants. And if you didn't see that part, that's in part one of the guide. Um, and so let's play this out. So we're going to go stronghold. We're gonna stomp E9, right? So this is our first new dwelling down. Then we're gonna to bridge to D6 and build there, right? So this is an example of um, getting two new dwellings in round one with the two workers from our big building scroll. And then the last step was, right, we're going to take the worker power action and we're going to get this trading post down. And again, now when we get to round two, we have tempo. It's very, it's one action and we're getting earth one already. And this um, gives us a bit of a leg up on being able to um, solve our giant scoring problem. And having that trading post up in round one, it means our income's pretty balanced. We got three worker income, so we can pay for that temple plus one new dwelling. So maybe we're stomping there in round two and building. And guess what? We've already gotten our ship town. So now we also got our, um, our, our ship increase that we're um, really looking for, right? And so now all of a sudden, this looks really nice. We've got already uh, a ship increase. We um, have been producing pretty efficiently. And guess what? Let's take a look at the track, right? So there's always the question of like, when does this make sense to do? In this case, we built two trading posts in round one. We towned in round two and we have our ship up really good production and we're ready to build out dwellings in round three. This is a good situation where uh, a TP prep opening could be really appealing. And that brings us to the end of our uh, sort of niche, rare, fancy pants, spicy um, giants openings that we can pursue. Now remember, almost always we're gonna be doing the standard opening and if you didn't see that, that's in part two of the guide, but it's good to have these up your sleeve, um, partly just for fun and partly every once in a while, this really is gonna be um, the way to go. So, so it keeps the wheels turning, um, make sure that you're always sort of checking some of these opportunities to see if something you wanna try. Thanks for watching this three-part guide on Giants. Um, it's been fun to think through this with you and hopefully having done this, our Giants games will be stronger. I think Giants are a really fun faction, partly because of the challenge of figuring out how to win with them. You know, you are, they're, they're the biggest underdogs in, in Terra Mystica. And so it's really fun to try to find those game plans and identify those, um, you know, setups where they're actually pretty strong. And there's something really nice because of some of the um, limited considerations of their game plans, it's very focused. You can really lock in on, 
um, following those principles and, and navigating your way on to the scrolls that you need for scoring and for resources. And there's something really nice about that. You sort of have this laser focus on the game plan. So hopefully you have as much fun playing them as I have. And um, and good luck to you and your Giants games going forward. I want to say thank you to Jekyll03, Nerdcube, and Zorus for um, feedback on parts of the guide, general support, and uh, encouragement. And um, yeah, good luck to you all. And hopefully I'll see you for a game soon. Thanks for watching.